Hello, today we're gonna check out how to create this simple but awesome countdown timer. So open GDevelop and let's start making some games. Okay, the first thing we need for this timer is a text object. So we will create a new object of the type text and we'll call it timer text. And we will make it slightly bigger. I will type in 60 and I have downloaded a font that I wanna use that's called Saddlebag and we can just leave this as it is. We don't have to set any behaviors and we don't have to set any variables for this text. And then we just pull the text into our game view. And now we first want to start a timer. So we will go to our event sheet. And in here at the beginning of the scene, we will add an action. And in here we will search to find how to start a scene timer. And we will call it counting down. And now when we start the preview, uh, we will see nothing. We just have our text here and uh, there is a timer going, but we can't see anything happening yet. So what we want to do is to update the text that we have in our scene so that we display the timer. And to do this, we add a new event and we don't want any condition for this event because we want it running all the time. And we want to add the following action. We click on the timer text and then the text and we'll change this text to two string parentheses. A timer involves numbers and we want to tell our program that we want to convert these numbers into a string which is text. And to show this timer's action we type timer elapsed time and we have to put in the name of the identifier that we gave the timer which in our case was counting down and we press ok and now when we preview the game <laughs> we see a big number uh, counting up and uh, this is 50% uh, of what we want to achieve but the following things are wrong it's counting up and it's a very large number but we're gonna fix this in some steps so the first thing we can fix is to get the numbers down to a smaller decimal and that's pretty easy we just wrap this timer elapsed time with the round function and we'll preview it and now our number is much smaller because the round function does exactly what it sounds like it rounds the number to one decimal and now we want the timer to start counting downwards instead of upwards and to explain what we're going to do now I'm going to use some math. What we see here is a number line and you see zero in the middle and then we have the positive numbers one, two, three and so forth. And we have the negative numbers minus one, minus two, minus three and so forth. And when we are starting our scene timer now, it counts from zero to one to two to three and so forth. And But we want our timer to count downwards from 10 to 9 to 8 and so on. And to do this, we're going to have to do two things. We're going to have to use absolute numbers uh, and absolute numbers is measuring the stretch from a point in a coordination system to origo which means zero and what we're going to do here is we're going to start at zero but we're going to move our position to minus 10 and then our timer will count upwards back to zero but it will look like it counts down and what we will do is this. We'll go back to gdevelop and then we will wrap our timer elapsed time with the abs function which tells gdevelop that we want to use absolute numbers and that's the distance between our position where we want to point our number which is going to be negative 10 uh, up to zero. And then after the parentheses that ends with counting down we're going to type minus 10. And now if we run our game, it shows our timer 10 and it counts down from 10 to 0. But right now it's not going to stop or anything. It's just going to count <laughs> upwards when it reaches 0 and it goes to positive numbers again. So what we did here was we added a timer text and then we made sure that it understood that our numbers was going to be a string text and then wanted to round the numbers so it wasn't so big. And then we wanted it to use absolute numbers and measure the distance from the negative number we set here, minus 10, 
so that our timer will start from minus 10 and then counting upwards. And this will make it look like our timer is actually counting down because absolute numbers are always positive. If we remove this abs and preview it, and then you will see it displays negative numbers, but that looks weird. If we wrap it with the abs, you see these positive numbers counting down. And if we want something to happen when the time has reached zero, we will do the following. We'll add a new event and add the condition and type scene timer, value of a scene timer. And our timer is called counting down. And we will set it to when it's, when it's greater or equal to 10. And this has to match the negative number we used. And in this case, we used negative 10 in the code and then we have to have 10 here uh, because even if it sounds strange, our timer has started at a negative 10 and counts upward. So we, we still have to tell this uh, condition to check for when the timer has run for 10 seconds. And we'll add an action and we will type pause timer and we will pause the scene timer, count it down and add another action timer text and we'll change the text to timer complete and press OK and then preview it and now it counts down and here comes the moment of truth. The timer has counted down and it changed it to this very ugly text that says timer complete. OK and that's how you create a countdown timer in GDevil. I hope you learned something and be sure to press that like button and don't hesitate to talk to me in the comment section if you have a question or just want to say hello and I'll see you soon in another video.